Blackbird episode number 30. My name is James, and today I am joined by one of the sponsors of Blackbird, Juliet Nail. Juliet, as listeners of this show will know, is a yoga instructor and the proprietor of BU Enterprises. I wanted to get her on the show because, well, we've met a couple of times in person, had coffee together a few times, and I just really love her. I think she's a great, great person. She's a wonderful conversationalist. And so I kind of wanted to pick her brain, just kind of get her story, learn more about her business, and let you hear from one of the people who make this podcast possible. As always, I recommend that you head to her website, which I will link in the description. It is buenterprises.com. She is ready to hear from you, and now it is your turn to hear from her. This is my interview with Juliet Nail. Juliet, welcome to the show. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for having me, James. So you are, you were my first sponsor actually for Blackbird. And as we've kind of gotten to know each other, it has, I got interested enough in like your story and your path and your areas of interest and stuff like that, that uh, I thought it would be fun to have a little conversation recorded. So that's why I invited you on. Why don't you kind of introduce yourself to the audience since, you know, most people don't know you yet. Thanks. So, um, like you, well, I haven't been around the liberty movement as long as you. I think you're 2008, but um, I've kind of been in and around since 2012, um, both locally. I live, I've lived in Minneapolis um, since about 2004, um, and then I did some work with I don't know if people remember Robin Kerner in, in Blue Republican back in the day, but um, and I also now I'm helping out on a podcast called Quaker Libertarian. Um, so, you know, a lot of us have that journey where we started out libertarian and ended up agorist. And, um, I also followed that, that normal, what's the, what's the joke? Like the difference between a libertarian and anarchist is six months. Um, so I definitely followed that route and especially as kind of more and more things that we all saw coming years and years ago came to pass, especially with COVID, you know, it kind of became clear even activism isn't going to work. Lobbying isn't going to work. You just got to create the world you want. And um, so that's kind of, um, you know, I've been focusing on my garden. I've been focusing on trying to get healthy. And um, so with COVID, my yoga, I teach Pilates and and, uh, I've taught Pilates and uh, what yoga and senior fitness for years and years and years. I was an athlete when I was young, I was a runner. And um, so with our practice with COVID, everything went down. So uh, we had to practice online. So I realized that I could expand my teaching online. I had had this business idea in the background for a long time. I have a, a background working in Silicon Valley and, you know, I've, I've worked the drudge day to day like everyone else. And um, I realized that exercise is awesome. We should have exercise. We should all do PT, diet, all of it. But we can't just wait until we get home to feel better, right? We're at work 40 hours a week. So whether you're at your desk or you're driving a truck all day from work site to work site, or you're on your feet at a restaurant or you're, uh, you know, you're the caretaker at home, we're doing tasks all day long that kind of wear on our body and we might feel frustrated, tired, disconnected, you know, all that stuff. We're, we feel trapped. Or, you know, my, um, my marketing ladies, like you're planted in one spot all day and kind of what we do at BU is yes, we encourage all those other things, exercise, diet, all that. And, and, um, most of our trainers do our personal trainers, yoga teachers. So you can link to that from our site. I, as I said, I teach a couple classes, but our work is getting people to feel grounded where they're at. So you're scanning, you're working on breath. You're working on noticing what's going on with your body. And reacting like um, I like to talk about um, cats and kids and French women, right? So you're at, you know, they don't exercise. A cat just stretches and responds when they don't feel good, right? And they just naturally know how to self-correct. So that's kind of, um, you know, and, and the French ladies, you know, they're walking everywhere. <laughs> they're they're um, they have an attitude. They're owning their presence and their body and their alignment. 
in their posture. And that's kind of what, um, what we aim to teach people is, you know, how to check in with themselves, breathe, like maybe you just need to calm down a little. So just stop and breathe. Let's, let's line up, you know, you, you know, in the military, they're like, puff your chest, lift your chest, right? It, there's something to that. In my mom's day, you had to walk with a book on your head, right? To get that alignment. And a lot of injuries are prevented just from that alignment. We go a little bit further because like, um, if you're at, I don't know, I'm just thinking of if you're driving all day long in your truck, you know, there's all kinds of little neck exercises you can do. You, you've done my at your desk exercises, there's things that you can incorporate into your day. So I have the intro program kind of shows everyone those exercises, which is what you and I did. But I don't think I focused on breath enough. I'm learning. And then we have a, have a, a Be Empowered program that kind of checks in with people once a week and gets them to journal and just kind of paying attention and incorporating, you know, how many times am I responding to how I feel? How many times am I stretching throughout the day? And um, yeah, so that's kind of what we're doing. And I've got, I've got some great trainers already on board and I'll be getting some more and uh, we're having fun. That's, that's what we're doing over at BU. I love that analogy with uh, the animals kind of just knowing exactly what they need to do in order to like, you know, I mean, sometimes a dog who's getting old will have like a back problem or whatever, or joints, but it's not like dogs need to practice walking with a book on their head. Like they just kind of, they just kind of walk how it's natural for them. Why do you think it is that humans develop these habits? I mean, I've got, I've got a weird walk. Like I've always, my, the way I walk, people have always made fun of it and I don't know where it came from, but like, <laughs> how, how do you think that happens that we don't necessarily walk the way that our body is naturally meant to walk? or stand uh, or sit? Yeah, no, that's an amazing question. And it, um, it's twofold. So one is we're in our heads. So it's, it's almost like we're not present anymore. Um, and remind me, I got to tell you about the housekeeper steady. Cause that, that's really amazing. Um, but two, um, there is, um, a phenomenon in domesticated animals and humans, um, where, you know, like trauma and PTSD and like shell shock, all that, only, only happens in domesticated animals and humans mm-hmm. because what, what happens in nature. So I, I did the somatic um, stuff a long time ago. What happens in nature, if a, a lion's going to attack you and eat you, the deer uh, is either eaten or it, it initially freezes and then it runs away and it shakes. It shakes that trauma and that anxiety out where um, humans and domesticated animals, we get stuck in the freeze. And we actually hold that stress and that trauma in our body. So kind of what I'm trying to get us to do is, uh, I'm sure you've heard all the statistics of, um, you know, like driving, when you're driving in your car, that's the same level of stress as being chased by a tiger, you know? (laughs) So what we're trying to do is like, hey, let's calm down that nervous system with our breath. And then we're moving, we're getting that alignment so things don't hurt. But really, it's about that reactive movement and that self-correction. And a lot of what it is, is a release. Like it is just bringing those arms up and down. It, jumping jacks are the best thing in the world. Dance, I mean, we don't do those things at work. But you know what I mean? It's shake it out big part of our work is release it, shake it out and move on to the next thing. So, yeah. Yeah. And I mean, stand up straight with your shoulders back is Jordan Peterson's first rule for life. So it's probably, uh, it's probably important. Um, according to him, not only is it, not only is it just good for your posture and, and, you know, the physiological benefits of that sort of thing, but it also like grants you the air of confidence that people interpret as like, it's what, can cause you to like rise in your social hierarchies. That's where his, his big lobster analogy that uh, he's, you know, often criticized for, but uh, you know, the, the, the gist of it basically is that, you know, we've had social hierarchies for hundreds of millions of years. It goes all the way back to lobsters, which have the same chemical receptors in their nervous systems. I don't even know if lobsters have like a proper brain, but you know, I mean, if you inject lobsters with certain brain chemicals that humans also use, like the ones that are in antidepressants, then they also have 
a reaction, the same sort of reaction that you would expect from a human taking those meds. And it can also cause them to feel more confident and raise, rise in their social hierarchies. But merely having good posture impacts that brain chemical in much the same way that an antidepressant can. So you're definitely onto something, I think. Uh, well, and when, you know, we all listened to Jordan Peterson back in the day and that, yeah, like that really resonated with me. Now, I, as, as an anarchist, I was a little caught up on the hierarchy thing. Um, and then I decided, you know, I don't need to worry about that it, because if in our, in our uh, libertarian paradise or anarchist paradise, you know, our hierarchies can be voluntary, right? Mm. <laughs> so, yeah, I and the... the 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 deal with the deal with hierarchies i mean whether they're whether they're imposed by a state or an employer or whatever or just they come into they come into being naturally um they're going to happen like you you can't not have a hierarchy otherwise it literally is the chaos that that non-anarchists think that anarchy is anarchists we know that you know society can be self-ordering if we but let it self-order and part of that order is hierarchies but in nature it's more like what are you good at if you're you know i mean if you're better at gardening than i am then i'm not going to try to out garden you the competition there isn't needed um right i can learn a lot from you i mean i've just this week (laughs) i've been sending you pictures of my tomatoes to make sure that they're not dying you know right right well and here's what's interesting um so i kind of see the leadership and hierarchy thing as a well, I was initially very resistant to any acceptance of hierarchy um, just because of my views. And then also, you know, like you, I'm a cradle Catholic, but I've been a practicing Quaker since 1989. I was like 19. Mm-hmm. And uh, Quaker governance, like what I see, I think 12-step programs are like this, are non-hierarchical. They are consensus government, gov- governments, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but there absolutely is leaders in that realm. and. Um, so, I mean, I think maybe the trick is hierarchies are going to happen. Um, is it the only method of governance? I don't think so. I, I think your your key is self-ordering and voluntary, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think I think we're certainly on the same page there. And actually, that reminds me of my interview with Per Beeland from several months ago. I might have to go back and re-listen to that because he talked a lot about hierarchy as well. And I think that my view on it might have evolved since then. So I'm going to put a link to that in the show notes um, just so everybody can kind of get on the same page as, as, or not on the same page, but kind of like level set to use a damn corporate jargon term. So, (laughs) So speaking of corporate jargon, nice transition there. You originally BU Enterprises, I think... And this might even be your current primary focus. You want to really focus on uh, like corporate wellness programs. Is that right? Can you can you talk a little bit about that? So, so that is in the long term plans. Um, I think mm-hmm. in working with my marketing person. Um, so, so yes, we do want to go to corporate clients. Like, like actually, I was talking to some people at Trader Joe's last week, whether it's office or retail or whatever, absolutely, we, we want to tap that market. Cool. Um, my um, my consultants are like, you know, right now, that would be, let's step back, that would be employer-sponsored, right? Like, get those corporations to pay for that for their employees, right? Um, my, my team that I'm working with, my consultants are like, right now... Um, let's focus on the employee or the worker the you know that we're sponsoring it so it's the and the entrepreneurs the people that are working at home because of covid um you know just self sponsoring right now so it's it's both and it's both and for sure but um the people that are paying me now are self sponsored so yeah so we do want to go into corporate But I don't want people to think that it's only for people at your desk. So I know we have people that drive all day that listen to you. We have people that um, that are on their feet all day, and we, you know, we can work with that. It's wherever you're at. um, Let's sit there and try to figure out what's going to work for you. So that brings me to my housekeeping study. Mm, Yeah, um, that's a that's a good. I, I read about this in your kind of preliminary notes. This is really interesting. Isn't this amazing? So this is like from NPR, like, I don't know, 10 or so years ago. And um, there was a study done on housekeepers. And they, they um, 
in the, the study group, they made a connection from, you know, vacuuming, making your bed, dusting, sweeping, all that stuff to exercise and how they're moving and, uh, you know, how this was a lot of work they were doing, right? How it was exercise. And the control group, um, they didn't tell them anything like that. And at the end of the study, those who were taught that they were exercising, so basically they reframed what they were doing. Um, they lost weight. They developed more muscle. They felt better. They had less frustration. They were happier. I mean, obviously, the last few things are subjective. But, um, you know, that's kind of what we're doing is we're reframing. And I, and I love um, the gal I'm working with. Um, she gave me this metaphor of we want to be grounded as opposed to planted and stuck in one place all day. So our, you know, when our housekeepers reframed and grounded themselves, um, they, they felt great and they realized they were exercising all day long. So, so that's kind of what we want to do for, um, whether it's actually, we have a program we can, we can help you correlate your gardening physical work with what you're doing, you know, with, with this work or you're cooking all day. Um, I have people that are at the, the cooking all day or doing retail all day, come up on your toes, dip down and do squats, do some um, Achilles stretches. And it, you know, it reduces varicose veins. It helps um, reduce uh, plantar fasciitis. So anyway. That's great. How did you, so how did you um, like originally get into this yoga Pilates fitness kind of area? So I, I was an athlete when I was a kid. Um, so I was, um, I was actually, <laughs> this is funny because I, I didn't do collegiate and I didn't, like I've been pretty sedentary as an adult until the last 15 years or so. So um, I was inducted into my high school hall of fame in 2019 for, uh, which is easy when you're, when you're kind of old, I'm 50. Um, but I was probably the first female uh, runner to, um, you know, to do pretty well. Right. So I, I started running super young and competing because my sisters were doing it. Um, so I actually, I didn't realize I was doing yoga then, but I was really stretching a lot. Um, and then in the mid two thousands, I, I, you know, I went back to the studio as a middle-aged woman and trying to do yoga and I'm in like super pain. And, um, and I wanted to teach yoga, but like, it was so painful. I'm trying to do down dog and everything hurts. It's supposed to be this resting pose. And over time I ended up teaching, um, silver sneakers first for older folks and then Pilates basically because they needed teachers and I just did it. And then, um, later I did do yoga, but even after doing the full training, I couldn't connect it to my body. I was trying to look like the other yoga teachers and it wasn't working. And it wasn't until I tapped into what little, um, so my name is Juliet. I was called Julie. It was the seventies, right? Little Julie, you know, what did I feel when I was getting ready for a race? When I started tapping into that and, and, and um, feeling the poses, and then started teaching it that way, like teaching my students. You know, when you worked with me, you know, I would say, feel it in your hamstring, feel it in your Achilles. Yeah. Um, to make that connection, because I think, I mean, I don't know about you, I lost that ability. And if I'm trying to look like somebody else, I'm not dealing with my geography, my anatomy. And um, so I'm not, I'm not going to get the benefit if I'm trying to look like you, you know. <laughs> I need to do my down dog. I need to do uh, my, I don't know, whatever it is. Um, I think that whatever you, you get what I'm saying. So that, um, so it just kind of evolved over time. And then I, I also made a correlation from the, the exercise we were doing silver sneakers to um, uh, like, I realized those exercises could help when you're sitting at your desk and then, you know, I added kind of the posture part, the breath part and the alignment and then added stuff, uh, as I worked. Right. So yeah, weird. You, I, my life's kind of been, um, watch out if you don't like something, cause you're going to end up doing it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so I never set out to do anything. I always kind of take like the path of least resistance. You know what I mean? Like people ask me to do it. So mm -hmm. I do it. I hated grammar. So I became a linguist. I didn't like business. And, you know, 
Uh, I worked in Silicon Valley. <laughs> so that's kind of, that's the deal. Talk a little bit more about planted but not grounded. It sounds like, sorry, grounded but not planted. Can you talk a little bit about the difference between those two? Yeah. So, um, so we already kind of talked about the, the planted, you kind of feel stuck because you're, mm-hmm. let's say you're driving all day long or you're, you're at your desk and, um, we'll use the desk as an example. Your ergonomics may or may not be good. Um, you got a lot of stress going on and, um, you know, it's not like you can stop and go for a run or, and even a lot of the corporate programs, the best ones I've seen are at least half an hour instead of an hour. Um, but even that sometimes people just cannot get away. So, um, so the thing is you gotta be realistic. Like this is my situation. Or if you're, I don't know, at a job site doing construction, you know, you're limited to your situation and your body where it's at today. You know, I'm not going to go run, um, a five minute mile right now. You know what I mean? (laughs) Um, so you can, um, so example, you can, maybe you're talking on the phone, you can't leave, but you can at least get up and stand up in your cube and do circles or, or stretch your Achilles or do squats, um, or stretch your arms. So that's an example. You can always work on that alignment and it shouldn't be work. You can always realign and kind of unleash the the birth white body that, that the kitties have, you know, uh, you know, we were born with this healthy body and we automatically kinked our neck when it hurt. We automatically stuck our hands behind us and pushed our chest forward. So it's really just a remembering. So it's what I find is uh, if I do those things and I'm constantly, you know, I don't sit in one place, but I kind of move. Maybe I sit on the sofa for a while and I'm stretching my hands while I'm typing. Maybe I sit in my chair um, or you're at a standing desk, standing desk, sitting desk. Maybe you take a five minute break and do your steps a couple of times um, a day, right? So you, you work with what you have. And surprisingly, it seems like these stupid little teeny things, but you'll find you're not as frustrated at the end of the day. You have a little bit more energy. Um, it, one of my clients, I love, I love her. Um, she's an older woman and she's in super, like I always think of her as in super great shape. And um, she's, uh, but she had a fall and had some issues in the last couple of years. And so I've been working with her on Pilates. We've been doing at the, um, we've been doing this material. And um, her comment was, it's like I meet my body again. So that's, that's my goal. I want, I want you to meet your body and your breath again. Yeah. The ad copy that, uh, that I read, or I guess I don't really read it anymore. Um, which is probably for the worst because God, when I, when I read these ads or when I recite these ads, I, (laughs) I have to edit so much. I probably should just write it out. Anyway, the ad copy that you sent me, um, says BU enterprises welcomes you back into your body. And I think that's, well, you call yourself a mystic. And I, when I think of mysticism, I think of like out-of-body experiences. But there's definitely, or maybe not out-of-body experiences, but you know what I mean? Like being one with the universe rather than rather than focusing on your body, you focus on your spirit. But I think you probably see it more holistically. Is that is that right? Well, I don't know that it's more. But what I'm trying to do is use your body as the access, right? Um and use what's in front of you. So, okay, so you're Catholic. I don't, did, did you get confirmed? Uh, yeah. Uh, in okay. Eighth grade, so, I think. Okay. So, my confirmation saint was Saint Teresa the Little Flower, a little bit of a family saint. Oh my gosh. Go I, that, but, apparently, yeah. apparently, I'm related to her. <gasps> oh my gosh. Really? Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Um, at least that's like the family lore. Her, uh, her last name is Martin, and um, my mom's maiden name is Martin. Oh, we'll have to explore that more. Um, yeah. <laughs> so the two of us are a bundle of religious and, and philosophical contradictions. So, <laughs> so Catholic, Quaker, agno- agnostic. So here's the trick, James. It's not just mystic. It's agnostic mystic, right? So mm-hmm. the agnostic piece is what, uh, okay, so I've experienced this thing that feels pretty mystic, 
but I don't really know what that is. And I don't really care what that is, right? But St. Teresa's thing, as you know, and she was a family saint. And my sister was named Teresa for her. My uh, grandma, great grandma had a relic of St. Teresa's. I don't know what that means. Uh, But I chose it. I chose St. Teresa, the little flower. And her thing is the little way, the little way. So let's do those little things. Let's do those little things. And it's just crazy how those little things make a difference. Um, A colleague of mine was working with a trainer and, you know, she's on the phone. She's on Zoom calls all day long. She's working at her her kitchen table. And um, her trainer had her, you know, did a little bit with diet, but not a lot. The what she, the trainer had her do was go up and down her steps four times, like twice a day. She lost 27 pounds. Um, now what I'm, my work is not really about losing weight or whatever, because I think we're already beautiful right where we are. We're already mm-hmm. perfect, but that doesn't mean, you know, back to your Jordan Peterson thing, you know, you're always moving forward or backwards. That doesn't mean just stay. It means you know, work with what you got. Don't feel any guilt because you've gained a couple weights or like right now I was outside and I realized, oh my God, I need to tone a little on my legs. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm 50, I'm 50. I can have a little flat once in a while. You know what I mean? <laughs> and, uh, and actually my doctor, like 15 years ago, she was like, just don't let two weeks of not working out turn into two months. And if you do, don't let two months turn into six months. And that, um, that's how it changed my life, right? Because you, you're gonna, you're gonna be, well, our common doctor, can we, can we shout out his name? I think we can, right? Yeah, sure. Uh, And actually he might actually listen to the podcast at this point. Well, Dr. Lesky, I love him because you know, he's not super touchy feely, um, but he gives it to you straight. And he says, you're moving towards health or you're away from health. And he'll tell you if you're like, you know, if you're coming and getting adjustments, but you're not working out or doing physical therapy or doing any of this, he'll be like, yeah, I can adjust you, but it's not going to do any, it's only going to go so far. Right. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So you're moving towards health or away from health. So, yeah. And Dr. Lesky. Dr. Lesky. (laughs) (laughs) Which Dr. Lesky, uh, he's, so he's our chiropractor. Um, Juliet and I live kind of near each other, actually. Actually, if you're in the Twin Cities, um, particularly in the Western suburbs, look him up. I'll put a link to his clinic. Uh, he's fantastic. But uh, yeah, I do wonder that moving toward health and moving away from health thing, like, how do you know if you're moving toward health? Like, I mean, for me, I can, I can, for instance, go on a keto diet and just lose a shit ton of weight. But like, I'm living a completely sedentary life you know, and, and, and I can feel it like climbing the stairs. I get winded, even though I'm lighter than I was a month ago. On the other hand, I can, you know, eat what I want and go to the gym, not lose a pound, uh, but feel mentally and physically way better. What do you think like the, the, the ideal balance there is to me? Like I, I kind of want my cake and to eat it too. Um, I want to be able to live a leisurely life. I want to be able to eat whatever the hell I want. I want to, you know, exercise when and if I want, but not anymore. And also feel good and healthy without any trade-offs. What do you think is a, is a good balance for that? Well, I think it was your ladder of the two, right? It's um, how do you feel, but really tune in with how you feel. Like, um, so, you know, I love, there's so much I love about the Catholic church as far as ritual and the truth, goodness and beauty and all that stuff. Um, but what I love about my Quaker practice is that sitting in silence and groundedness. Cause you know, I ramble, I'm all over the place. I need to sit and focus. And I, I think this work be you that, that it's that it's get yourself grounded and, uh, and whatever that is like, um, I, like I actually, <laughs> I actually do best if I say a rosary every day with, with the, the whole thing with the mysteries, right? I'm not saying I do that, but it, it's a form of meditation. It is grounding for me. It does not have to be that. Um, it might be brushing your hair or I don't know, you guys are shaving. Um, what are those things that ground you and feed and nourish you? So um, 
So that is like that kind of thing is part of the homework in the Be Empowered, the 12 week, 15 minutes a week program is getting people to um, kind of journal and look at what are those self-care things. Like I, I take um, sometimes two baths a day because that if I'm stressed out and I'm like, wow, ah, I go take a bath or I go in my garden, cooking will do it. Cleaning will do it for me. I don't know. What grounds you? What grounds you, James? Boy, well, okay, so I had, well, had, had, I have been going to the gym and last week I was so busy and so stressed that I just didn't do it. I didn't go to the gym a single day last week and I felt it. Like, I don't know if it was just the, the stress that I was already under, um, given my, my workload last week was pretty high or if it was the lack of exercise and, and not just exercise, but that routine of going to the gym specifically, but like I was on the verge of tears all week just with stress. Like it wasn't, it wasn't like I was sad. I just was just a ball of tension. So for me, I think definitely the routine of going to the gym is part of what grounds me. Also, oddly enough, doing the dishes and listening to podcasts while I'm doing the dishes, that's definitely something that, uh, and, and, and there we go. That I had like early morning meetings. What I, what I do, my daily routine, I wake up, and I go, I take my dog out and I go in the kitchen and I put on my podcasts and I do the dishes from last night's dinner. My partner loves it because he doesn't have to help with the dishes. And I love it because that's like my moment of meditation before I go to work. And I didn't do that much last week. I think we even ate out a couple of times. So like there were no dishes to, to do. And I, it just threw me off. Maybe that's what it is. Like the routine is what is what I like and what oh, makes me feel sorry. grounded. James, here's your homework for this week. Download the day one app journal, okay? And, <laughs> and every day you're going to just pay attention to what grounds you. So for you, dishes is, is health enhancing. <laughs> and, and you could add the little, rep, the little uh, go up on your tiptoes and drop to your um, uh, squats while you're there. And, and uh, you could do... Um, I do Achilles stretches there. The big one I do is up on my tiptoes, down to flat, and then um, uh, squats because I have I get plantar fasciitis really fasciitis really bad, varicose veins, and um, and then I have a knee injury, so the squats are really nice. So, um, but what so that what I just said that part is actually less important than the meditated calming effect of the dishes on your routine in your day. So routine. So, you know, that's self-care for you and dishes. So what, and I'm sure I have a feeling listening to your podcast, you love to cook and I have a feeling cooking uh, is healing and grounding for you. Am I wrong? Oh yeah. No, uh, I do love to cook. And I also, even more than cooking, I love just being in the kitchen, standing there over the stove or over the cutting board or whatever, and listening to a podcast and just sort of Actually, it's weird how much podcast listening is like part of my grounding routine, I guess. But so, so that, but then also sharing that meal with others, specifically, you know, every night with my partner, but also, you know, when we have people over for dinner or whatever. I love that. Well, in your alignment, you know, so that's an opportunity is I would encourage you. Yes, you're going to pull in and all of that. But um, I, when I worked with you that, that session, I wasn't, um, I probably should have emphasized a little bit more the lifting up and out of your joints. So yes, your shoulders are in your back pocket. Yeah, you're pulled in, all that, but you're lifting up and out of your joints. And that that's the Jordan Peterson thing, right? The, yes. um, it, I think my back in the 50s, my mother was told to shine her headlights. Shine your headlights, James. Is that a reference to her boobs? Yes. but <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. <laughs> Yes, I'm sure that that would be considered creepy today, but I still love that. Shine your headlights, shine. So, because uh, that's kind of what this is about. I, I, I want to shine. I want you to shine. And and actually, you're an extrovert, so I would say extrovert. Or I'm okay. I'm putting that on you. I observe extrovertedness in you. Um, I imagine that's part of your healing and your grounding too. A certain amount of of connecting and the work, yeah. this work is part of your healing and health too, right? Yeah. Well, and that's part of why 2020 was so awful for me. Uh, prior to starting the podcast, I was a, I was just a mess. I, I had hardly any human contact. And actually, you know, even before 
COVID, I was working and still am working in a full-time remote job. Um, like even after the pandemic's over, I'm not going to have an office to go back to. But what I would do when I was working remote was I would like go to Starbucks or somewhere and and work there for the day just because I needed to have that like outside the house, talking to people, seeing people, uh, having people see me, sometimes even just striking up a conversation, that kind of thing. I needed that in my day-to-day life, which yeah, is probably so good I mean, that I started an interview, an interview show because <laughs> it's really kind of replaced that almost. Right. Well, and I think, so I guess what I want people to really see too in, in part of this work is how much they are already doing, or you will look at you, how much you're already doing for your health, how much you're already listening to yourself, right? And you're listening to your body. So I, I really think, you know, acknowledge yourself and thank yourself. Like I, I, I finished my Pilates classes um, with a hug. And, you know, one of the things I say is thank you, thank yourself for taking care of yourself because you're already doing it. Right. So just acknowledging all that stuff that you're already doing that's amazing and just reframe that. I think judging from the housekeepers, you know, that makes a huge difference right there before we even get into alignment and breath and some exercises. What about like doing these things while on the job? I would imagine. So you've mentioned housekeepers and retail workers. What about someone who's just sitting at their desk all day, other than getting up and taking a walk every so often? A lot of us are working from home. We don't have and probably can't afford um, one of those desks that raises and lowers. But what what are some other things that we can do? What about, you know, maybe like a mechanic or summer's coming? What about a lifeguard or, you know, a camp counselor or whatever? What what are some things that people can do to more consciously just in their day-to-day life, you know, practically do these, implement these tools that you, that you're advocating for? Uh, well, a bit. So, do you want specific exercises or like generic? Yeah, both. Why not? Okay. So, um, when I think about like the the work that you and I did together, um, so one of my favorites. If so, if you're working at your desk all day, well, first and foremost, pay the money or bug your company to do an ergonomic eval. So, find out what is ergonomic and what isn't. Now, that doesn't mean you have to pay all the money and get the ergonomic setup. Um, I learned for my wrist and my setup. Um, that uh, a laptop keyboard is small and that's actually better for me. And those ergonomic keyboards would have actually caused me a lot of pain, right? So do the, I also learned that your wrist, um, if your wrist is horizontal, that is not neutral. Your wrist vertical is neutral. So it's going to be in less pain. So do that ergonomic eval, find out, and then look at your situation. Even if you're sitting on the sofa typing, um, you could sit actively. So part of what I'm talking about is just sitting actively or walking actively, just noticing your body, right? And that breath. Um, But so you can, you could sit actively. So I'm just going to use the example. uh, I I wanted my brother to be a tester for one of my trainers. And he was like, I just sit on my sofa. He doesn't know I'm going to be calling him and say, well, Bill, you know, all you have to do is have your leg out to the side and then lean forward and start stretching your hamstrings while you're typing, right? (laughs) So he doesn't know. Bill doesn't know. I'm still going to get him. But um, so so actually, if you sit up on your chair, I don't know if you're sitting right now, nice and tall. Everybody that's sitting, sit on your chair. Make sure all four corners of your feet are on the ground. And you're going to uh, put your hands on, let's say, your right leg. Then you're going to straighten out your left, flex your foot, and bend forward. Okay? You're going to bend forward till you feel your hamstrings. I say, say hello to your hamstrings. Okay? Your low back pain from sitting all day is from weak core is from tight hamstrings and tight IT band. So IT band would be uh, cross your legs like a dude, right? Grab the back or the bottom of your chair, lift up and lean forward and drop that knee. And your IT band is on the outside of your hip. So that's what you're going to feel. So those are examples. But all of that, you go in and you're just like, eh, whatever. And um, why were you sore, James? What did we do? Why were you sore the next day after our 90 minutes? Oh, my God. I was sore for like two weeks after our 90 minutes. And what did we do? <laughs> I, I don't quite remember, but it definitely was it was definitely in my back that I was feeling it the most. And it wasn't like, a oh, my God, I need a massage sore. It was an oh, my God, I just spent an hour in the gym sore. Um, do you want, should I remind them what we did in each yeah. exercise? Well, okay. maybe not, maybe not every single one of them because we can't see you, but, uh, but yeah, why don't, why don't you talk a little bit about 
some of the focus areas that your program? Uh, well, so wherever you are. So whether you're standing up all day doing my little um, raise your feet and drop down, or you're sitting at your you're driving all day, um, no matter what you're doing, everybody can do this. So wherever you are right now, no matter what you're doing, stop what you're doing. Just stop. <laughs> stop. Notice what's going on. Just pay attention. Okay. Now I want you to shake your belly a little. Shake your hips and let it go. Maybe you need to move your neck in your shoulders and let it go. Roll those arms. Just let it go. Love your belly. You can jiggle your belly, jelly belly. Okay. Now, so feel those two different things. So one was just how you are, blah. And then one was relaxed on purpose. Okay. So now you're going to pull it. You're going to imagine your spine is a building and you're going to pull in at the basement. So we're going to pull in. We're going to ride the elevator. Got to remember to breathe. And you got to remember when you're breathing, you're pushing those lungs apart behind you. So pull in in the basement. You're going to ride the elevator up. Now you're going to go halfway to your belly button. You're going to pull in. Then you're going to pull in your belly button. Now you're going to pull in your your diaphragm. Okay. When you get to your heart, now you got to be pushing those ribs apart. You breathe in with your whole lungs. You're going to lift your heart. So this is the Jordan Peterson up and out of your heart, up and out of your joints. Puffy, proud chest. Make your light shine. Right? Drop those shoulders. And then you're going to check to make sure that your chin is about this distance. You're going to take two fingers and feel that tendon behind you. Make sure the tendon at the back of your neck is taut. Okay? So so you're lifting. Imagine all your joints and skeleton and bone is lifting up to the sky. And all your beautiful, juicy, active muscles are hugging you and active and maybe grounding into the ground. So you can do that wherever you are. Now, I want you to tune in to how you feel. What do you feel? How awful is it that this feels entirely unnatural to me and the way I was sitting before, which uh, I don't want to go into too much detail, but it involved a lot of slouching and my feet up on a trash can. So (laughs) That makes you human, James. I do it. um, I've been doing this heavy duty work with the marketing lady and she won't let me do what I just did with you. So, so this will be the first time she gets to see the work I do. So that, what I just did with you guys, we do a shorter version, but my, me, my trainers and I do that in every movement we take you to. And then we do more focus on breath um, because when you're, so, so now, so go ahead and let yourself slouch and just whatever. And then in an instant, think active and Jordan Peterson lift. So what I noticed when I was working, you know, I've probably worked 20, 30 hours a week over the last couple of weeks with her on this marketing stuff. And uh, I realized when I was sitting there for a long time, all I had to do is what you did. Oh my God, I'm slouching. And then all I had to do was just, ah, just be present in my body. So I just said active and it, it changed. Mm -hmm. You get, it gets easier as you go is what I'm trying to say. (laughs) Yeah. Like it becomes like second nature. And also it sounds like you've got uh, like a almost Pavlovian response to the word active now, which is probably yeah. good for, for a healthy, for a healthy habit forming. Yeah. Well, and, and it's each person has to create what those are. Right. So, so that's the challenge for you. It's like, so, so that's actually a big part of the program is I don't want you to feel guilty or shame because you were slouching. I do it all the time. And, uh, I have to constantly remind myself too, like, Oh, okay. And then um, usually when I do that, it's important to breathe. And one trick for everybody is breathing in through your nose is cal- and out through your nose is, is super calming. But even if you can't breathe out through your nose, at least breathe in through your nose and slow that breath down. Just, you know, think about that week last week where you had that ball of tension how would your week have changed if, if you, every once in a while, when you notice that tension, if you just took a big breath, just one or two, and then imagined your muscles active and supporting and loving you, right? I, I don't know. I mean, that's kind of cheesy, but <laughs> I don't know. What's the non-cheesy version of that, James? I need a better metaphor. Oh, no, I love that. I think that's great. Um, just sort of like embracing yourself with uh, acceptance and love and... Uh, what like peace? I guess is is a good is a good uh, yeah. Peace is the is the best what noun descriptive noun I guess for that. Well, that's, what I, that's what I that's what I feel anyway. I just feel a little more calm, especially when focusing on my breathing. Yeah, 
Yeah. And, and that's why, so what's great is my trainers come from different backgrounds. And so my, my gal, that's an Ashtanga person, you know, she's really got a lot of stuff for us on that. So, um, All right. what, what is Ashtanga? So Ashtanga is a, it's a branch of yoga or a type okay. of yoga. Got it. Basically. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, um, I'm just so grateful to, to do this work. And as, as activists and Liberty folks, you know, a lot of people, we have businesses, we're doing all this stuff and then you, you're, we're finally doing what we want. And then like, we don't have time to take care of ourselves. Well, that's baloney. You know, <laughs> you just have to make the time and do it. Right. And not just make the time. You don't have to make the time. You just have to be where you are when yeah. you're there. You can incorporate it into the time you're already spending. And I think um, while we were talking, one thing that I'm going to do for sure is get a wireless headset uh, so that I'm not tied to my desk while I'm on these Zoom calls all day. Not not the not the podcast Zoom calls, but like the the ones I do for work. I mean, there's really no reason that I need to be sitting at my desk for for a meeting. You know? No. Um, and and if you think about like um, stay home, whether it's dads or moms. Um, you know, they're cooking, they're cleaning, they're holding the baby, they're doing this, they're doing that. And I, I have one gal who's working full time and taking care of a baby. And um, she was already doing a bunch of this stuff, but I gave her some little tidbits to do. And um, it, you know, really, we can, we can adopt this reframing and this how to connect and be present anywhere we are. And so like, we're um, driving, you know, we, we came to visit family, my my husband and I grew up in Ohio. And um, so on the trip, I was trying to every once in a while, you know, do that alignment that I took you through and then just stop and do the breath. And, um, you know, I didn't feel tired and achy when I got here after 12 hours. So, and I moved a lot. Well, we're about to drive from Minnesota to Texas. So I'll make sure to implement some of that as well. Uh, yeah. All right, Juliet, we are running up on time. So I really appreciate you coming on today. This uh, this has been a great talk. I love these I love these talks that don't get so much into politics and is a lot more evergreen and personal and personal development-y. So I appreciate the insight that you provided. Why don't you tell the audience where they can find you? So I want to do that. And I, I'd like to end on my little Brazilian um, inspiration song. Um, oh, sure. So... My website is BU Enterprises, and hopefully by the time this airs, I have revamped it. Um, if I have not, and the, the copy doesn't speak to you, don't worry, um, it, it's coming. And you can sign up for uh, the introduction class, the Be Empowered class, or if you just want to contact me and know kind of what it's more about, there's a, um, there'll be an email link, and uh, probably my phone number is even on there too. Um, so that's that. And then... Um, there is a Brazilian song. So I lived in Brazil a couple times, Geraldo Bandre. And he was in exile during the dictatorship um, for his, his work, basically. And this is one of the most famous songs in Brazil. And it's, um, it's called Pra Dizer Que Não Falei Dos Flores. So that you can't say I didn't talk about flowers. And um, what I love about this song really is so come on, let's go. Don't wait for other people to do this. Those who know, those who know, do it. And that's kind of what this movement is about. And I, I really, I, I really want to acknowledge you and thank you because, you know, a lot of the liberty movement, a lot of the time we spent criticizing, like seeing what's wrong, the Federal Reserve and this and that. And um, the biggest thing I got out of COVID and um, is, no, we have to create the world we want now. And, and this song talks about, you know, singing, cantando e cantando, seguindo as canção, aprendendo, ensinando uma nova lição. It's, it's singing and following the song, but let's, let's learn and teach a new lesson. And that's, that's what I see you doing, James. You're, you're always trying to connect people and to um, support other people um, and lift each other up. And I just, I really thank you and acknowledge you for that. Awesome. Well, thank you, Julia. This has been a distinct pleasure and uh, we'll have to do it again soon. Thanks, James. All right. Thanks again to Juliet for joining me today. And thanks to you as always for tuning in. 
If you haven't already, make sure you put your email address in the subscribe box at blackbird.substack.com. That is the best way to subscribe to this show because it not only gets you episodes of the podcast directly in your inbox, it also will subscribe you to any written content that I produce. And wherever you're listening to this, I do appreciate your ratings, reviews, hearts, thumbs up, stars, etc., etc. And with that, this is another episode of Blackbird in the Can. I will see you for episode number 31. Until then, live free. Music